in today's lecture we will see the new points from the chapter number 2 second law of thermodynamics the second law of thermodynamics we have already seen and the second law of thermodynamics gives the conditions of spontaneity with the introduction of a new function entropy the criterion delta s is greater than 0 for a spontaneous process applies only to isolated system in order to decide about feasibility of a process we must know the entropy changes of a system as well as that of the surroundings and this measurement is rather inconvenient chemists are generally interested in systems which are interact with their environment rather than the isolated system and in this chapter we will introduce two new state functions which can be used to determine the direction of a spontaneous process in terms of properties of system only and these two functions are helmholtz free energy and gibbs free energy so helmholtz free energy and gibbs free energy i will define so consider a system with its temperature and volume which are held constant and the system is not isolated because the system must be in thermal contact with a thermal reservoir to be at a constant temperature hence the criterion delta s is greater than 0 and we know the delta s is equal to delta s of system plus delta s of surrounding that is the entropy change in the system plus entropy change of the surrounding and when delta s is greater than 0 does not apply to the system at a constant volume and temperature so delta s is greater than 0 this criteria does not apply to the system when the volume and temperature are constant so we will obtain the criteria for spontaneity of a process for a system at a constant temperature and volume in terms of new state function and this new state function is known as helmholtz free energy and which is denoted by capital a and the fundamental expression governing spontaneity is the clausius inequality and in the previous lecture we have seen the equation of clausius inequality that is ds is greater than or equal to dq by t that is a change in entropy is greater than or equal to change in heat with respect to temperature and the equality is satisfied only for a reversible process so the helmholtz free energy is defined as capital a is equal to e minus ts so a represents helmholtz free energy e is for energy and t is temperature s is entropy so again definition is a is equal to e minus ts and the next definition is gibbs free energy which is g so most of the reactions occur at constant pressure rather than at constant volume because they are open to the atmosphere and the criterion for the spontaneity of a process for a system at a constant temperature and pressure can be obtained in terms of new state function and which is denoted by capital g and known as gibbs free energy and the definition of gibbs free energy is g is equal to h minus ts so h is the enthalpy t is the temperature and s is the entropy so g is equal to h minus th so we will start with our first point now the helmholtz and gibbs function and the second point of today discussion is the helmholtz entropy and gibbs function so let's start with our first point 
the first point is the help of that gives function so we know the spontaneous process is unidirectional and delta s is greater than 0 we have seen the condition so delta s means what it is an entropy change an entropy change delta s is equal to delta s system plus delta s of surroundings and all this is greater than 0 and we have seen the Gibbs free energy and the Helmholtz free energies G and A and this two delta G and the delta A both are the state functions which depends on the initial and the final conditions of state. Then the fundamental expression which governs spontaneity is the classes inequality and this is written in the form of TDS is greater than or equal to dq that is the definition of entropy change ds is greater than or equal to dq by t and this equation is useful for reversible processes because dq is equal to du minus dw this is our first law of thermodynamics and tds because we know dq is equal to TDS. So, just put DQ is equal to TDS. So, TDS is greater than or equal to DU minus DW. So, this is the value of DQ. Now, minus DU plus DW plus TDS is greater than or equal to 0. So, just transfer all these terms to the left side of this. Then, equation became as minus du plus this minus w to the left side it comes as a positive so minus du plus dw plus tds which is greater than or equal to 0 this, so this is our equation number 2 now the system can do different types of works as we know expansion type of work and the compression type of work so the system can do different types of works on the surrounding and it is useful to distinguish between expansion work and the non-expansion work. So, our equation 2 can be written as minus du minus p external into dv plus dw non-expansion plus tds which is greater than or equal to 0. So, in our equation minus du so, minus du as it is plus dw means this is a work. So, for non-expansion work equation is written as dw non-expansion. This plus tds term as it is only the external pressure is here minus p external dv. So, we know w is equal to p delta v and here system works on the surrounding therefore sign is negative minus du minus p external dv plus dw non-expansion plus tds which is greater than or equal to 0. So, this equation expresses the condition of spontaneity for an arbitrary process in terms of the change in the state functions u that is internal energy v volume as entropy anti temperature as well as part dependent functions p external dv that is so w is equal to p delta v and w non expansion so for an isolated system work done will be equal to zero that is w is equal to zero and change in internal energy which is greater than or equal to 0 that is du is greater than equal to 0. Now equilibria and spontaneity. So it is useful to consider transformation at a constant temperature, constant volume or the constant pressure. Any of the two things are constant. So see for an isothermal process TDS is equal to D in a bracket ts so this is can be written as d in bracket ts and the equation number 3 can be written as minus du plus tds which is greater than 
minus dw expansion minus dw non expansion this equation number 3 can be written as minus du plus tds so just this term skipped as it is minus du plus tds which is equal to minus dw expansion minus dw non expansion so this can be written as d in bracket u minus ts so u minus ts which is greater than or equal to now in first equation minus du plus t delta s is greater than or equal to minus dw expansion minus dw non expansion and now d in a bracket u minus ts which is less than or equal to dw expansion plus dw non expansion because equality is applicable for reversible processes as system goes on forward direction or the reverse direction so in first case they are greater or equal to and in second case less than or equal to now a is equal to u minus ts here a is the helmholtz free energy and it is a state function so by using this definition the general condition of spontaneity for isothermal process becomes da is less than or equal to dw expansion plus dw non-expansion so change in helmholtz free energy is equal to less than or equal to dw expansion plus dw non-expansion and when the volume is constant that is a dv is equal to zero then the helmholtz energy da is less than or equal to zero and we can write the term pdv as a d into pv and tds is equal to d in bracket ts so d in a bracket u plus pv minus ts u plus pv minus ts is equal to d in a bracket h minus ts and which is less than or equal to dw non expansion now dg is equal to h minus ts so here d in a bracket h minus ts so h minus ts it is a definition of gibbs free energy so you can write here d in bracket h minus ts is equal to dg and gibbs free energy change is less than or equal to dw for non expansion work and at an equilibrium condition the gibbs free energy is less than or equal to zero and the definition became this equation can be written as delta g is equal to delta h minus t delta s here delta g delta h and delta s all are the state functions which depends upon initial and final states so this is a change in gibbs free energy which is equal to enthalpy change minus t delta s now the second point of today discussion the entropy and gibbs function so in this we will see the relation between entropy and the gibbs free energy so for macro macroscopic changes or the large changes at the constant pressure and temperature in which no non expansion work is possible and the condition for spontaneity is the delta g or the gibbs free energy of a reaction which is less than zero now our definition which we have seen here delta g is equal to delta h minus t delta s this can be written as delta g r is equal to delta h r minus t delta s r so this r represents the reaction or a chemical reaction so this is our equation number one now there are two contributions to delta gr that determines 
if an isothermal chemical transformation is spontaneous, they are energetic contribution delta HR that is the enthalpy change and the entropic contribution that is the delta SR into T or the T delta SR. So, delta SR is the entropy change for the reaction, delta HR is the enthalpy change of the reaction. So, the delta HR and del T delta SR determines isothermal transformation is spontaneous. And the following conclusions are made based on the equation number 1. The conclusions are the entropic contribution to delta GR is greater for higher temperatures and a chemical transformation is always spontaneous if delta HR is less than 0 and this is the case for exothermic reaction or the enthalpy change is less than 0 this is for the exothermic reaction and the for the spontaneous process delta SR is greater than 0 the entropy of the inverse is increasing this is our second law so delta SR is greater than 0 now delta HR is greater than 0 and delta SR is less than 0 means enthalpy change is increasing and the entropy change is decreasing this condition is for non-spontaneous process or the reaction and for spontaneity enthalpy is decreasing and entropy is increasing and the reverse condition is here the enthalpy is increasing and the entropy is decreasing for non-spontaneous reaction and if Delta GR is equal to 0 that is the change in Gibbs free energy is equal to 0. The reaction mixture is at equilibrium and there is uh, no change in the spontaneity. So, neither the direction of change is spontaneous. So, system is at equilibrium. So, in today's lecture we have seen two points the Gibbs function and the Helmholtz function or the Helmholtz and Gibbs function that is Gibbs free energy and the Helmholtz free energy and the conditions for spontaneity and the relation between entropy and Gibbs function. In tomorrow's lecture we will see Gibbs-Helmholtz equation.